Um, I forgot to unmute your mic. Oh. So you're going to have to repeat all of that. <laughs> um, we are good to go, I'm pretty sure. And um, please repeat. This is why I always ask, are we good to go? Hi, everybody. Welcome to a Saturday impromptu crochet along live with Mr. In Stitches on, on the tech and me, Jada. Thank you for joining us. Um, we are going to make a winter hat today. We are revisiting our perfect fit slouchy hat pattern. We have a tutorial for this. So if you want to see the cold notes version of today's live crochet along, we'll make sure the original tutorial is linked down below. Uh, but we thought since it was shaping up to be a cold rainy day that it might be fun to do a live crochet along and now the sun has come out but you know what we're gonna make a winter hat anyway <laughs> it's good to get ahead of schedule and today's winter hat is going to be um, you can make it to fit anybody as originally said in our first tutorial but we're gonna give you the children's and the adults sort of slight sizing differences this is a real make to fit hat so it's not difficult i would consider this a very easy pattern and we're going to talk about some tips and tricks some of the things that people have reported over the years that they find difficult when they're fiddling with yarn hooks personal tension stuff like that so we're going to make this hat and troubleshoot as we go today so here's what i've got a gorgeous ball of size 5 chunky weight acrylic yarn you can use acrylic cotton wool blends, bamboo, you can use any fiber that you feel is comfortable to wear. Um, I'm just in love with this color, so I'm going to be using this. It is, never seen this before, Diamond Select Olivia. I think, I think I picked this up. I don't even know. <laughs> That's how long it's been in the stash. Uh, but I do know that it's a size 5 chunky acrylic yarn. I've got over 300 meters in this ball. So I know that's way more than enough. For children's, you need around 175 yards of a chunky weight yarn or a size four yarn if you wanna use that. You can use either of those yarns for this project. And for adults, I recommend about 200 yards. So I have more than enough in this ball of yarn. Um, pair of scissors, yarn needle, measuring tape, very handy if you are making it for yourself or someone else. Um, the measuring tape comes in handy if you don't have the head that you're making it for immediately available. We're going to talk head sizing in a second. And hooks. The original pattern calls for a 5.5 millimeter hook, also known as an I or a 9, but you can size up your hook. The smaller the hook, the tighter your stitching will be. So if you want a warm, tightly knit hat, you want to go with the smaller hook, 5.5 millimeter. Or if you want a slightly looser, more floppy, slouchy kind of feel, upsize your hook. So I've got a J hook here, which is a six millimeter. I've got the K, which is a 6.5 millimeter. And I also have a seven millimeter, which is technically a K. They kind of, seven millimeter doesn't really have a letter designation. Um, I'm gonna use my six and a half millimeter hook today. I don't use this one very often and I thought it might be kind of fun. So that's what I'm using, but you can use whichever one you want. Nico, Nico's in the house. Nico has gifted a membership. Thank you, Nico. Nico with the super sweetness here and Alma has won it. Congratulations, Alma. Thank you both. <laughs> um, I'd like to chime in here quickly. I'd also like to shout out everyone that purchased a pattern while we were uh, setting up the stream. Yes. So a big thank you to, I believe, Summer, Joanna, um, and, Debbie. and Debbie. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yes, our pattern, we have got the pattern available in our Etsy shop and for today and tomorrow, just because we thought we would do a live, we've got it up for 50% off. So a little sneaky sale tucked in there for everybody. Uh, that's today and tomorrow. So if you're part of today's live stream, you know about it. <laughs> um, I've never really taken a ball like this apart. So I'm looking for, oh, there's the outside end. Oh my goodness gracious, Michelle, thank you. Michelle has picked up some patterns from our Etsy shop. Thank you so much, Michelle. I'm gonna reach into the, oh my God, I found it, I found it. I found the inside, woohoo, just like that. Okay, I'm gonna pull from the inside of the skein because um, this way it won't roll around on me. Oh my golly. Kara, thank you. Kara has picked up a pattern from our Etsy shop too. Thank you both so much. Let us get started here. We're gonna, we're gonna tire little Lula out waving here, <laughs> waving her thank yous. Aww. Um, 
A big thank you to everyone for doing that. Also, a uh, Kitsuni, I don't know if I have that right. Kitsuni asks, what size yarn is that? So this is a size five, chunky weight yarn. We've got the materials required and the hook sizes and whatnot listed in the description box down below. So if anybody's late coming today and they ask and you guys see the question before we do, please point them to the materials section. Um, so size five, chunky weight, any fiber you find comfortable is fine. And I'm using a larger hook. I'm using a six and a half millimeter. It's also known as a K, I believe. Um, and that's what I'm gonna do today. If you do not have the head, like your own head, available, um, and this is why I've got the measuring tape handy, we have a head sizing chart available for free over on the tools page of our website. Um, it's also included in the pattern. If you pick up the pattern, the head sizing chart is also in the pattern. So if you wanna make winter hats for everybody, your family, your friends, you just wanna make some for the make ahead stash, maybe you wanna make some to donate to charity, that's fantastic. And if you're not sure about um, how to measure, the head sizing chart will help you with that. Uh, invaluable tool, and it's for free over on our tools page of the website. Um, I'm pretty sure that link is also in the description box. So here we go. We start with the brim of the hat. The brim is made in a nice loose rib stitch. If you are making this for a child, then you want to chain, uh, let me just zip down to my notes here, you wanna chain seven for a child. If you're making it for an adult, chain 11. So the chain in this case, the chained foundation stitches, are going to de decide the width or the depth of the brim of the hat. So seven for children, 11 for adults. And once again, if you want a tighter stitch, you can use a smaller hook. If you want a looser stitch, you can lose, use a bigger hook. Um, this pattern is so flexible, you can technically use any hook and yarn weight that you want because you are building it on measurements, not so much stitch count. Um, so that's why I think I love this pattern so much because you can make it a million different ways um, with a bunch of different, your favorite yarns, your favorite fibers, your favorite hook size, and you will always work out so long as you pay attention to measurement. Um, and that's a, that's a, that's a handy way to crochet. If, um, if uh, someone doesn't have a oh my God. sale. Teresa, thank you for picking up a pattern at our Etsy shop. <laughs> Big thank you. Um, if someone doesn't have the chunky yarn similar to one you're using, mm -hmm. what can they use as a substitute? You can use a four weight yarn. You will just end up creating more rows than me. Not a big deal. You could use a three weight yarn. You could use two three weight yarns held together. Um, you could even use a larger bulky weight yarn, like a size six and an even bigger hook, like an eight millimeter, also known as an L or 11. Feel free to experiment. Now the bigger and heavier weight the yarn you go, the bigger and chunkier your hat's gonna be. So if you don't want a big, bulky, chunky looking hat, then you probably don't wanna use the big, bulky, chunky yarn. You wanna use maybe the, the, the lighter weight yarn, uh, but you can use any yarn you want and you can use whatever hook you like the look of the stitch with. So if you want a tighter stitch, smaller hook. If you want a bigger stitch, a looser stitch, bigger hook. That is the gauge. Tip for today's pattern, we are going to skip the first chain from the hook and single crochet into the second chain and in each chain across. So we are using the single crochet stitch. You can use the half double crochet stitch if you want. My only caveat is that once you get to the upper part of the hat, we are working in the round and sometimes um, the taller the stitch, if you're working in the round, the more kind of obvious the... Oh my gosh. <laughs> Marie! Thank you, Marie, for picking up a pattern at our Etsy shop. Um, if you use a taller stitch than a single crochet, the, um, the back seam where you cross rows to continue into the next one becomes more obvious the bigger your stitch. So you can use half double crochet, but just keep in mind that it might make that back of the hat a little more obvious. Um, that's why I like single crochet for this project. When you get to the end of your row, you will have six stitches in row one for a child's hat. You will have 10 stitches in row one for an adult's hat. So the brim of the hat, uh, or the, the sort of the, the cuff of the hat, doesn't get any bigger than this um, width-wise. So every row going forward for the cuff will be six stitches for children, 10 stitches for adults. 
we are using the back loops only single crochet stitch. So we chain one and turn at the end of every row. We always skip our turning chain. You look for that first stitch and you want the back loop. The back loop is always the loop furthest away from you. Back loops only. Then you pick up the back loop and single crochet as normal. Back loop, single crochet in every stitch all the way across and you are going to use the back loops single crochet stitch for the entire brim of the hat. If you find it's buffering, I see your little comment there, Caroline, just, just back out and then reload it. Sometimes it's an internet thing. I think it might be the connection on your end because um, the, everything here on our end says that it's a good connection. So just refresh your, yeah, the usual. Yeah, back the out usual. and restart. Um, hello, hello, everybody who's just popping in. You can use size five chunky weight yarn or a four weight or a lightweight or two lightweights held together, depending on the look you want. If you want a really tweedy look and you don't have any chunky weight yarn, two lightweight size threes held together in different colors makes an absolutely stunning hat. Goodness gracious. <laughs> that is from SL Cola. I can't quite catch the name, but thank you so much for picking up a pattern. If that was you, please make a comment in the live chat. Oh my goodness, we have such a busy little shop today. This is exciting. Thank you, everyone. That's Thanks really for coming into out. our little shop. Mm -hmm. we, need, um, we need the bell to go off when we someone need... walks through the door. Yeah, aww. Ding, 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 ding. I love that little overhead bell. That's so sweet. <laughs> Um, still 10 stitches for adults, 6 stitches for children, and you can already see that rib happening. This is what the back loops only stitch does. Chain 1, turn, skip your turning chain, continue with back loops only single crochet, and let's get at it. We can now pick up the pace a little bit. Like we said, we've got a tutorial for this hat. It's one of the first hat, I think it is the first hat tutorial we ever did on the, on the channel, like 9 years ago. Um, and it's still probably my favorite basic hat. I make this kind of hat all the time. It's warm, it's cozy, you can make it to fit anybody. Chain one turn at the end of every row, back loops only, single crochet in every stitch all the way across, and every row will have six loops or six stitches if it's for children, and it will have 10 if it's for adults. And I'm using this really pretty yarn If you notice it buffering, just back out and reload the stream and then it should sort of sort itself out. It's uh, just the internet. It's a Saturday. I would like to shout out Sakura Sue, Sue. Uh, who says, um, YouTube keeps kicking me off subscription. So there's an issue with this and YouTube, the, the crew at YouTube are constantly saying it is it, it doesn't exist. But YouTubers keep saying it does. Mm -hmm. So now Sakura Su is a longtime channel subscriber, a longtime channel member, and Sakura Su says that YouTube is kicking her off subscription. So us YouTubers keep saying to YouTube, this is happening. Why is this happening? Is it a glitch? And they keep saying, no, we don't think so. We don't think it's happening. But I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. I you just have to you have to check and make sure you're subscribed. Yes. And um, the other thing you can do is send feedback to YouTube and let them know what's happening, and maybe they'll address it a, a little bit, uh, pay more attention to it. Yeah, I I imagine it's one of those things where some software updates just inter interfere with other existing software, and there's just some weird thing that you know often when you rewrite software or you create a patch in software. One of the things in the software patch tells the software that it needs to patch itself to, to, to reset or to set to default, because that kind of allows everything to start reboot from scratch. And if there's a line of code in there that suggests start from scratch or reset, then it might have the unfortunate effect of resetting your subscription, um, your subscriptions on your YouTube, uh, account. Um, I don't know if that's the fact, but I do know a little bit about how code works and uh, I have a funny feeling it might be happening somewhere. I'd also like to quickly mention that this is, um, we have a full length tutorial pre-recorded um, 
on this hat. So mm -hmm. if there's anything that you miss, um, you can also watch that tutorial in the future. It's like a Coles Notes version. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to link that. I haven't linked that yet. Yes, we will link that. We will definitely make sure that one is linked. Um, it is the original. And I do use a slightly smaller hook, but this is good because now you can see how it looks with a five weight yarn and a smaller hook that we used in the original tutorial. Holy cow, Cynthia, thank you so much for picking up a pattern at the shop. Um, and today I'm using the bigger hook and you can see sort of the difference. So already, uh, this yarn is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna count my rows. So this is row one down here. And then every ridge is two rows. So an easy way to count is two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. I am now just finished my eleventh row. And let's take a little measurement. So I know that the circumference of my head is 22 inches. You measure the circumference of your head or the head you're making this for by wrapping your measuring tape around the forehead, over the ears, and around the back of the head. So that's the circumference of your head. Um, this is a stretchy kind of pattern. The BLO single crochet or back loops only single crochet, the ribbing stitch, creates stretch. You can see that when I pull it. You don't want to pull it too much when you measure because um, you're going to have a little bit of give in your hat, but if you stretch it too much when you measure your brim and you know the temptation sometimes is to stretch it and say, yeah, 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 that'll fit because you want to get to the end of the hat sooner. <laughs> You're going to end up with a single crochet for the every single row edge in your brim. This is how we work the upper part of the hat. So the fewer rows of stretchy rib stitch, the fewer stitches you will have in the upper part of your hat. And one of the problems that people sometimes run into is that they make the ribbed section will fit if they pull it and stretch it over their head. But because of that, they end up creating, they have too few stitches up top to make the upper part of their hat nice and comfortable. So don't skimp on the ribbed stitch part of the brim. If it's too loose, you can always work a row of single crochet. <laughs> Laura, thank you for picking up a pattern. You can always work a row of single crochet around the bottom edge with a smaller hook and that will tighten the hat on you again. So don't skimp on the ribbed stitch part of the brim. But you can clearly see I'm already at four inches. So I have 18 inches left to go. Other way of looking at it is just a little over 10 centimeters, so 10 and a half centimeters. And I'm only 11 rows in. So this part is gonna go relatively quickly. I'm aiming to get to 22 inches because that I know will fit around my head. Also, I can put it around my head and feel that it fits comfortably, snugly, too tight, whatever. Um, so like we said, we have a head sizing chart over on the tools page of our website. It's got head circumference sizing for everybody. Preemies right up to men and larger heads besides. So if you aren't quite sure of a circumference, uh, a general circumference sort of measurement for a particular age group, then you can definitely use our tool, uh, the measuring chart, and that will help you along. And then all you wanna do is just write down the circumference measurement. Let's say it's 16 inches or 22 inches or whatever it might be. And that's your target that you want to use your measuring tape for, and that's how long you want to make this part of the hat, the ribbed stitch brim. Chain one turn at the end of every row. You should still have six stitches in every row if it's for a child, 10 stitches in every row if it's for an adult. I'm gonna continue pulling my yarn out. I love how this is changing on me. There's some Do pretty... you recall if we have the cross back stitch baby blanket do we have a video for that? Yes, we do. Or do we have a written, both a written pattern and a video? Yes, we do. Okay. Do you remember what it's titled? I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it's called the Cross Back Stitch Baby Blanket. Okay. So Sharon, just look that up. Cross Back Stitch Baby Blanket Jade and Stitches on YouTube and it should pop up. Yes. Um, that is such a beautiful stitch. I love that. It's kind of, you're sort of kind of wading into the territory of, of uh, cables a little bit with that. I like that stitch. That's a lot of fun. Oh my goodness gracious. Jessica! Jessica has picked up several patterns at the Etsy shop. Thank you so much, Jessica. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jessica picked up another one. <laughs> Thank 
Thank you, Jessica. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I know it was sort of a, it was a impromptu live stream. Uh, thought it was going to rain. Apparently, it's not. So uh, I'm making a winter hat anyway. I do love this pattern. It is comfortable. It can fit anybody. And if you are looking for nice things for men, women, and kids, uh, for Christmas gifts or any kind of gift throughout the winter, or if you just want stuff for the Make Ahead stash, or if you want things for donation, this is a great hat. You can stash bust with it. Holy cow. <laughs> Jane, thank you, Jane, for picking up a pattern. Oh my God, our shop is going crazy today. Thank you Woo! so much, everybody. Is um is everyone taking advantage of the fifty percent off hat pattern, or is this just random other patterns? I'm gonna just take a quick stop and have a sip of my tea. Give us an update. Oh my gosh, Kathy, thank you so much. Kathy has also picked up a pattern at our shop. Thank you all so much. Everyone's going to wear out little Lula's arms. She's going to get exhausted here. <laughs> I think she's going to Waving thank you. <laughs> Just having a cup of tea. I'm, if anybody's interested, I am having a chamomile tea with um, honey and vanilla. This is very nice. Chamomile with honey and vanilla. And I'm just going to stretch out my fingers a little bit here. Okay. Very, very nice. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Now, where am I at? Let's take a quick count. That is the bottom stitch. The ridge represents the second row. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17. I have written, I've written, I've done 17 rows so far. And I did chain one already. Chain one turn, 10 stitches per row for adults, six stitches per row for kids. And I'm going to work this pattern back and forth until I hit 22 inches without stretching very much. So just, this is already kind of a slightly stretchy feel, so I don't need to stretch it on my work desk. We have, um, we, we have a, a circle of inspiration request uh, question here if you'd like to read out Ashley's uh, question sure let me see and here. also summer asks silly Saturday poll and I say absolutely yes we absolutely have to have a silly Saturday poll all right what did Ashley ask here Jada what crochet project can you recommend for someone who throws away your work <laughs> that they don't like that you spent time on and do I not give them the gift or would you recommend anything Ashley if somebody tosses away a gift and then tells you that they did, first of all, that is the height of insult. So I would question, <laughs> I would question why you would give them anything. Um, but not everybody likes knit and crocheted things. I think it's worth, you know, mentioning that. It's good to know if people are into a certain thing before you give them something. So for example, don't fall into the trap of giving something to someone because you love it. Um, you know, if, if, you absolutely love everything to do with cats and you have a friend that's really not into them and you keep giving them cat stuff because you think it's adorable and cats are cute and your friend's just not into it. Don't be surprised if your friend doesn't really appreciate the gifts you're giving them. <laughs> so the same goes for anything. If you have friends who absolutely love berets, make them a beret. If you have friends that just cannot wear acrylic, don't like the feeling of knit stuff, are always in a t-shirt, then making them a sweater is a waste of your time and energy and they won't really appreciate it. So it's good to know the things that people like before you go ahead and make them things. Having said that, just about everybody can make use of something from the crochet or knit world. You just kind of have to know what it is they like. Are they into house decor? Do they like cute little you know, doilies or coasters? Do they like things that are useful, like, you know, cotton utility straps? We have a really handy t pattern and tutorial on that. Um, those are really useful. You can wrap them and button them up to keep things under control. They're useful in the car. You know, sometimes people just like useful things. Sometimes people like f pretty frilly, ridiculous things. Know the people that you're making gifts for. Um, one of the reasons I say it's nice to have a make-ahead stash is because, you know, things that go in the make-ahead stash should really cover a lot of bases. They should be of interest to lots of people, not just maybe 
yourself or one or two, you know, unless of course all of your friends like the same thing. Cherry, Cherry with a super chat. Thank you, Cherry. Hi, Ms. J and General G. Bought the pattern just now. Thank you so much, Cherry. Rita, speaking of buying patterns, Rita has picked up the pattern. Thank you so much, Rita. Thank you, everyone. Um, so yeah, great, great question, Ashley. If somebody's tossing away the things you spent time on, um, if it's an accident, okay, that's one thing. But if they toss it away because they just didn't like it, and then they tell you, I just, I feel like that's hurtful. <laughs> I mean, that just sounds like spiteful to me. Yeah, so I, I've, I I've, would just uh, stop giving that person anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've, I've given things to people. I, I have, I have gotten rid of things that people have given me over the years. Um, only, you know, for for multitude of reasons. But I certainly then don't go and say, "Hey, remember that sweater you made me?" So totally got rid of it. Like that's just. <laughs> Slide of rudeness. Uh, but yeah, it does help to know what people like before you give them things. Uh, and, and that's just like anything. You wouldn't go and spend a whole lot of money on an expensive gift for someone if you weren't absolutely sure that they, you know, would like it. That's just not not a great use of your time or your funds. And um, you want people to like the things that they get, you know, regardless of what it is. If it's something you made or something you bought. I'm going to work a few more rows here and then measure it. Um, if you are bound and determined to make things um, because you, you really want to, to make gifts because, you know, a lot of us, I think, here probably feel that things that are made are more valuable somehow than things that are bought. Not all the time, but, you know, there's a lot of love that goes into making something. <laughs> Speaking of love, Sakura Sue. Thank you, Sakura, for ordering several patterns from the shop. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, if you're going to give things away or spend the time making things, then, and you're not maybe sure, maybe you know that somebody might like a little make-ahead gift, um, it's good to have a, a series of go-to patterns. So things that maybe everybody needs, like a nice washcloth, um, a nice, um, coaster, like everybody, everybody likes to have their bottle of water with them, maybe a water bottle holder. Uh, maybe a, a simple little purse for like a, for young girls. Maybe a pair of fingerless gloves for your friend who has to type all day in a cold office. Like these are the things that you know you you need to know a little bit about the person you're making it for. But there are there's probably a pattern of some sort in some kind of fiber out there to suit every taste. Some of us just need to do a little more thinking than others because some people you know they don't tell you what they like guys are traditionally very hard to buy or make things for because they just like you know their video games and their one cup of coffee and that's it <laughs> not <laughs> no 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 names being being shared here <laughs> you're not talking about me at all <laughs> you forgot cheeseburgers and pizza cheeseburgers and pizza yes yes i'm not completely one-dimensional you know um, I, I mean, I'm pretty one dimensional if we want to get to it. Like if you, if like, what do I like? I get, you know, oh, give me craft supplies. That's all I really care about. You know, just craft supplies. I'll wear the same t-shirt for 20 years, but, uh, you know, I, I like a new ball of yarn. <laughs> um, I think you covered, I like, I like everything you said. Um, you, you can't, um, you can't. You can't consistently give people stuff they're not interested in because no. that's also showing Halfway that done. you're not paying attention, right? Yes. So you're ignoring that person's um, likes and dislikes. Um, and then the opposite of that is you give something and that person <laughs> says, hey, you know that thing you gave me? I threw it in the garbage. Well, that's just... <laughs> that's, that's a little bit... Uh, I guess mean would be a well. That's word. exactly what it is. It's mean. Yeah. You know? But if you're if you're consistently giving stuff to someone that they never said they liked, or um, you know, I like vanilla, and you keep giving me chocolate, then that's on you. Yeah. You're you're being the, the mean person. Yeah. So or or you're just not paying attention. You're just not paying attention, which kind of shows that you don't actually care. Yeah. Um, so yeah, going back to Ash, I think you covered it. Yeah. Well. There's a million ways to look yeah. at that. I think, I think, you know, self-reflection, that's what we're really talking about. That's here. a, that's a good one. Self reflection too. and self-assessment. Yes. A little bit of that goes a long mm -hmm. way as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I just passed the halfway mark of my hat brim. So at 11 inches, I'm going for 22 inches. 
that was 29 rows so I need to do another 29 rows and I will have a hat brim that should fit comfortably around my head I may need fewer rows because this is going to stretch a little bit as I go um, something to keep in mind as you crochet faster and faster and faster your tension may get tighter and tighter and tighter so it's a good to pause every so often have a sip of your tea or whatever you might be be sipping on and just kind of stretch your fingers out a little bit you don't want to get too tight you don't want to get too loose because um, that does change the tension and it will adjust your gauge so I am going to continue to pause and measure just to make sure that I'm not going over making too many rows or having too few rows um, so far at the halfway mark though it looks like 58 rows is my target row for the hook and yarn weight that I'm using now that's going to change for everybody this is why it's really good to have your measuring tape handy for this project because it is not stitch or row based it is measurement based and it's no more difficult to open up the measuring tape and just quickly measure it than it is to count up your stitches or your rows um, so if you're new to Vivian thank you Vivian if you're new to making a hat that isn't specific stitch count or row count and is actually measurement based this is a really good project uh, introduction to that because clothing um, often is if you've ever heard the word haute couture it kind of means of the body or on the body so made for the fit made to fit a specific body you want your clothing to fit you um, not to just fit anybody so it's important to get comfortable making crochet or knitting or sewing around measurements and not so much specific stitch counts Nico, thank you, Nico. Nico has gifted another membership, and Sylvia has won it. Wonderful, thank you. I am just. Nico is working on our big, beautiful basket today. Ah, I love those. I have four of them, I think. Four big ones two medium sized and three small ones in the craft room here, all busy working and I could always use a few more. I end up shuffling them around quite a bit. Oh, by the way, we have a goofy little pole up. Oh, good. It's only, it's, it's, it's semi goofy semi-goofy well it's saturday so take part in the poll and we will send it over to jada in a minute or so it's like like summer says you have to have a silly saturday you need poll. a silly saturday poll that's a must joanna says member ship milestone member for 19 months thank you joanna says mary max intent sale was great got lots at two dollars and 97 cents that's canadian so golly what is that a buck 50 american holy cow what a deal oh my gosh Leslie, membership milestone, member for 22 months. Thank you, Leslie. I make scarves and blankets for donations. Those are great. Blankets especially. Scarves are so great. Scarves don't necessarily have to be to a particular size, so they are a fantastic thing to make for donation. Debbie would like to know, how do I buy a pattern? We have an Etsy shop where we sell our patterns digitally. So you can view them on your computer or your tablet or your phone, but you can also print them out if you want them on paper or put them in a binder, which a lot of our, uh, a lot of our channel members and subscribers do that. They kind of collect a binder. We also have a binder kit. So I will link uh, directly to the shop and then you can have a look there. I'm going to do that in a minute. When you're making a brim in this style, so ribbed, you know, your back loops only single crocheting every row, maybe you're using a chunky weight yarn like I am. When you lay it down and you flatten it out on your desk, it looks long, it looks crazy long. And there's that temptation once again to think, oh my gosh, this is probably too big. I've made it too large. This is why you wanna keep measuring. So this looks a lot wider than a hat. Why? Because typically you see a hat folded in half. And the circumference of something is a sneaky measurement. The circumference is always a lot longer than you think it looks because it's going all the way around something. So at any one time in a circle, you're really only seeing a quarter of it. 
Um, I'm at 15 inches already. So what I do is I, because this is sort of stretchy, I just kind of like pat it into place, stretch it a little bit, but let it naturally come back to wherever it might sit without stretching it. And that's the stretch that I'm going to use. So I'm at basically 15 inches. I'm getting there. I'm going for 22 inches because that's the circumference of my head. And uh, I'm trying to keep my tension loose. I want this to be a nice, soft, kind of cozy, um, not a tight fitting hat. I want to be able to pull this on over. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Lori! Lori's picked up a couple patterns at our shop. Thank you, Lori. I want to be able to pull this hat on over my head, maybe stuff all my hair up into it, um, possibly wear it over my my ski. I have a, I'm sort of a ski, tight fitting ski, what, ski mask? I don't know what the heck to call it. It's not really a balaclava. It kind of fits over your head and your face pokes out and then it goes down into your neck. Um, it's kind of a balaclava. It's just that your face isn't covered, but I like to wear a hat over top of that sometimes, especially when I'm skiing. So I kind of like every once in a while to have a, a nice fluffy bigger hat, not necessarily one that fits really tightly. But you can make this um, with a tighter stitch if you use a smaller hook. Um, it's a very flexible pattern. So uh, definitely get comfortable with it because like I said, it's always nice to be able to pull some hats out of the Make a Head Stash as a gift or donate them. And um, our head sizing chart over on the tools page of our website will help you out if you're kind of unsure about measurements for standard sized heads. Uh, materials that are using we're using today are all listed in the description box so if you're just popping in and you're wondering about hooks and yarn that's all listed there um, the yarn I'm using in particular is something called diamond select Olivia I am absolutely unfamiliar with this yarn I bought it because it was pretty so <laughs> I don't know much more about it than that golly Holly Hobby! Thank you, Holly, for picking up a pattern at our shop. I'm going to take a pause here and have a sip of my tea. Lori, a member for 37 months. Thank you, Lori. Says, thanks for the Saturday fun sale and free tools. You're so welcome. Thank you guys for being here with us. It's nice to hang out with everybody. Hanging out on a Saturday with our crafty friends. Cup of tea, some crochet. Um, for anyone that's new, we also have... Um, not only do we have patterns for sale in our Etsy shop, we also have free patterns on our website um, if you're just learning. And I also wanted to mention, it slipped my mind. I completely oh, okay. slipped my mind. <laughs> oh my goodness. Was it the tools page? Maybe help it was the tools page. Help me out here, wife. Well, what were this you? This is your job. You're supposed to help me. <laughs> I don't know. I can't read your Come mind. On, read my mind. Even, I thought you could read my mind. Even after all these years, I can't always read your mind. All right. <laughs> I'll just leave then. I'm leaving. <laughs> I remembered. It came back. Oh, okay. I want to let all the new members know about our members page on the website. Because yes. Jada sneaks little free patterns in there all the time. Yes, I and do. right now we currently have the newest one is the um, one of the Fair Isle style plus patterns. It's the cupcake. Yeah, the cupcake. So um, if you're a member of Silk and Vicuña level, uh, make sure you go grab those. And Caroline, member for 37 months, thank you Caroline, says in a membership milestone, putting off doing the washing up. And so you should. <laughs> Saturday. Hang out. Kind of collect your thoughts a little bit before you get back into the washing. I think uh, oh, hey. um, read out Donna's comment there. This might help a lot of our viewers. Donna, Donna, Donna says one tip. When I download my patterns from Jada's Etsy shop, I send them to notes on my phone. That way they're constantly available. Hey, that's great. Maybe you could also share Donna which phone type you have. <laughs> Holy cow. Sylvia, thank you for picking up a pattern, Sylvia. Um, if you've got uh, maybe like an iPhone or a Samsung or whatever the style of software is you've got, just so people kind of know, maybe you're a little more familiar with it. 
I like to, um, I have a downloads folder. So every everybody has a downloads folder. It's not necessarily sitting on your, um, the, the little pages that you can scroll through on your phone. You ha might have to go into where all of your files are. Um, I forget what that's called. It's kind of like you swipe up and then everything's listed there. Um, everybody has a downloads folder. Sometimes that folder's in something else. Like on a Samsung phone, you have to go into your Samsung files. You click on that and then there's a bunch of more listings in there and the downloads folder's in there. And all everything you download to your phone or tablet will sit in the downloads folder. You can also open up your PDF reader and then open up a file from your PDF reader. We have a, uh, a question from too. Summer if you want to read that one out. Summer! Summer says... How many Pharaoh patterns do you think are going to be released in total? I was thinking of making them as squares and something them if if there is enough. Oh, and using them if there is enough. Well, let me see. I just counted the other day. Um, we've got... The blanket itself is going to be 12, obviously. Yeah, there's 12 of them. But uh, how many plus patterns are there? Um, so far, there's been at least two a month, I believe. So, so that's almost tw uh, 12? So, so 12? if we only do all the regular 12 plus an additional two, there'll be like 36. But I have a feeling there might be a few more because um, <laughs> we've already got... Um, there were others that just kind of come up because they make a lot of sense. They're a great idea and they're kind of something that people are looking for. Like the graduation cap wasn't something we were... Um, thinking of doing and then a lot of people were like oh you know we're celebrating a really important graduation this year and I thought oh golly well we should have a graduation cap and so we've we've got some extra ones that have popped up that we weren't necessarily planning on so at least 36 summer <laughs> and that's that's including the the official 12 that we'll have the um, the regular tutorials for although we do have a live that we did with the the date the 2023 um, yeah, so at least 36. I, I make a couple of samplers for every single one. So I already have a big, beautiful basket that is full to overflowing with the sample squares. I'm going to need a second basket. I'm going to turn them all into granny squares. It's going to be... I may even have too many for a blanket at this point. <laughs> all right, let's see. Where am I at so far? A little bit of a stretch. Oh, this is so pretty. Oh, my gosh. Do 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 do. I am at 19 inches, so another three inches, and that'll be it for the brim part of my hat. I should probably try and turn this the same way every single time. I really like the way that ribbed stitching looks. Me too. Yeah. It's also really soft it, and comfortable. It has a real nice look to it. It's the easiest. Is that acrylic yarn? Yep. Acryl yep. 100%? Yeah, 100% acrylic. It's very soft. Um, the if little you're... Robin has come to visit us. I can, I can see uh, see him through the window. Aww. If um if you're not into acrylic, <laughs> and I know a lot of people um aren't, you can use any fiber you want with this pattern. You can use cotton, blends, wool, nice wools, uh, angora. You can use anything. It's a hat, so whatever you f would like to be, you know, wearing on your head, you can use that fiber. That is perfectly okay. Vima's Crochet. Hello, Vima, with a super chat. I learned how to make my first hat from this hat. No kidding. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. That's that's amazing because I've seen your hats recently. <laughs> and they're incredible. Wow. Vima's been around a long time. Vima's been here a this long time. Uh, that hat video is, um, is about nine years old. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Vima. Vima is never very far away from her crochet hooks either. No. <laughs> Janet! Janet, thank you so much for picking up a couple of patterns. Thank you so much, everybody. You have such a, such a busy little shop. It, uh, it is a tremendous amount of help. Thank you for the support, everyone. Thank I, uh, you. We appreciate yeah, I really, it. I really do appreciate it. I know we are all kind of feeling the effects of crazy economy issues. Here in Canada, we really are. Everything is just absolutely mental. So uh, <laughs> We're feeling the effects of politicians that need to retire? Yes. It is. Uh, it is 
a big long list of them very very much appreciated please it retire helps keep us going here and that's one thing we want to do we want to keep this channel going mr and stitches jokes about retiring sometimes but it's because we sometimes wonder how much time we we can actually put into this and versus you know how much time we spend kind of working and uh we would really obviously rather be doing this <laughs> oh thank you to joanna joanna reminded me about the poll i am going to end the poll oh the poll um, I don't even know what the pool is. Data. Here it comes. Here we go. How many crochet hats have you made? Oh my gosh, great question. One to five, 45 percent. More than 20, 39 percent. None, nine percent. A million or so, five percent. I fall into the million or so category. <laughs> I. I should have voted for you. I make more hats. I absolutely love to make hats. I love to wear hats. I uh, I was known in my high school as the crazy hat lady or the mad hatter because that's pretty much all I did was wear bonkers hats all the time. I would make myself a skirt and then I would use all the remnants to make a hat. Ah, the 90s. <laughs> Lori says, I bought a grab bag of yarn at the thrift store, Ooh, it's like treasure hunting, with a couple single balls of bulky yarn in it. I think it will make some of these in mid-size to donate to my neighborhood school. I think that's a great, oh, child size. That's a great idea. That's an absolutely fantastic idea. Especially if they're really fun colors. All right, how am I doing? How am I doing? 22, ladies and gentlemen, I have hit the 22 inch mark. Now, just to be sure, I'm going to take this and wrap it around my head you can't see what i'm doing but it oh wow that is super cozy i wonder if that's too big hmm is it too big 22 inches without stretching it's a very you know what no i like it maybe i'll take out one row just because i know that i have to do the seam i'm going to take out a row um this is nice and fluffy and very stretchy. So because I'm using the larger hook and the fluffy yarn, it is much stretchier than maybe a smaller hook and a lighter weight yarn would end up being. So just something to keep in mind. Um, if you're making it for yourself and it's always good to make a pattern for yourself, trial run like the slippers, like a hat, then you kind of know how to massage the pattern to get it to be smaller or larger. So I'm gonna count my rows. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22. 6, 8, 10, 12, 32, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, wait, <laughs> 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, 4, 6, 8, 32, 4, 6, 8, 42, 4, 6, 8, 52, 4, 6, 56 rows. And I had thought at the half May mark at 29 rows that I might go to about 58. So at 56 and it's quite stretchy, I'm going to leave it at 56. This hat is for me and it's going to be nice and cozy and it's going to sit on my head comfortably it's not too tight it's almost a little bit on the big side but that's okay that's kind of the way i want it but i recommend um trying it on you basically pull it around your head and make the ends meet now if i put this closed that looks a little more like a normal hat right because you're used to seeing a hat folded flat so that doesn't look overly big um but it is it is a little large i could probably even take out one more row but i'm not going to because I do want it extra floppy. So once you've gotten to the end and your brim is as wide as you need it to be. So remember, if you're making it for children, it's gonna be a little bit narrower. Uh, us adults, 10 stitches, children, six stitches. You want this to wrap around your head and not be too tight and not be too loose. I'm gonna try it once more. This is something in my head is itching. It's like, hmm, should this be a little bit smaller? Nope, that's a good size. It's nice and soft. I don't like things to be too tight against my head. Um, hats do stretch out though so if it feels like it's a little on the loose side I would take out a row because it will stretch on you and here we go chain one turn take the two short ends bring them together and you're going to slip stitch in between the inside stitches so because the foundation chain row is the foundation chain row you're going to use the foundation chain and the inside loop so it's the front loop and you're just going to slip stitch through each set 
of matched loops. So make sure you get each set. <laughs> It'll be six slip stitches in total for a child, ten slip stitches in total for an adult. I always love to see where everyone's watching from. So I can only do four choices in the poll, so I, I'm trying my best to spread it out. But we have people from uh, watching from India. We have people watching from the UK. Um, the Midlands, is that in the middle, literally in the middle of the UK, Midlands? Or is that, an, is that uh, a town? Uh, the Netherlands, and I'm going to leave the poll up for uh, another five minutes or so, and then we'll see. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, there's your, our seam. So once you've slip stitched through each set of match stitches, now you have the brim of a hat, just like that. You can decide if you want to leave it with the seam on the outside or flip it inside out. I like to take my hook out, make that loop big. What, and, uh, what kind of hook is that? Someone was asking the brand. Do you, oh, do you know? Um, Taylor Form. Taylor Form. Um, to be perfectly fair, I'm pretty sure I picked this up at a secondhand store. I love uh, secondhand hooks and knitting needles. Whenever I'm in a thrift store, I always go to the tool section, the, the craft tool section first. Um, it's plastic. Uh, it is not aluminum it's plastic it doesn't have any um any seams that i can feel and it's it's a six and a half millimeter which is why it's not uh, got an ergonomic thing around it but it's quite comfortable i don't mind it um but yeah it's one of my secondhand hooks and it's a six and a half i don't have too many six and a half millimeters this might actually be the only one i've got i usually have sevens so you can also turn your hat brim inside out inside out so that that seam is on the inside and then you know you have that instead it's up to you it doesn't really matter um i'm going to put my hook back in my yarn and have a sip of tea oh golly that's nice mr and stitches can i trouble you to put the water on so i can have another cup of tea what i don't get paid for that <laughs> All right, I counted all my rows before I joined my uh, two edges together with a seam. So I had 56 rows. With the seam, that makes it 57. So I know that in my first row of establishing single crochet all the way around, I should have 57 stitches. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to chain one, and I'm going to slip stitch, or I should say single crochet directly into the... Um, same place basically that I finished joining the seam. I'm going to single crochet into the edge of every single row all the way around. So I can do this by looking for the row edge. I can do it by counting. I'm aiming for 57 stitches. Here's the thing I want you to remember when you're single crocheting in each row edge all the way around. You aim for the same number of rows that the same number of stitches as you have rows in your crocheted brim plus say the seam so i had 56 rows one seam that's 57 rows in total i'm aiming for 57 stitches all the way around so if i get 57 perfect if i'm one over that's fine if i'm one under that's fine if you feel like you get all the way around and now that you're crocheting single crochet maybe you've tightened up a little bit then a few more stitches is okay because that's just going to make your hat even as you work all the way up. Pole coming in. Pole incoming. What? Where are you watching from? The USA, 70%. Europe, east or west, 14%. Canada, 10%. Asia, or the other side of the world, like Australia, 5%. Well, I'm just glad you're all here. That's amazing. We I've... also have a lot of other countries. I couldn't fit them all in the poll. <laughs> everybody is from everywhere i love it and i'm glad you all could join us on a saturday presuming of course it's still saturday where you are australia is it still saturday there uh, i think you guys are 12 or 14 hours ahead of us any of our kiwi or aussie friends can help me out with that vima you're about are you about 10 hours ahead Seven hours? I'm not sure. Vima, Vima, how, how far ahead are you? <laughs> if 
Yes, if you're making this, I just saw the quick note here. Thank you everybody for helping anyone who's a latecomer out. Um, the pattern is available in our Etsy shop. We have an actual tutorial for this. So if you, you know, want to see the Coles notes, we've got that available. Also, you can pop in and see this from the start after it's done. Quickly, if you're making it for a child, the brim starts with chain seven, you want six stitches per row. If you're making it for an adult, we start with a chain 11, you want 10 stitches per row. And then you back loops only, single crochet in every single stitch of every single row until you have a strip of ribbed fabric that fits your target circumference measurement or fits around your head, depending on who you're making it for. So that's all you need to know so far. And now I am crocheting the establishing row of single crochet which is one single crochet per row edge. And I am just throwing my hook in at the edge of the row. I'm not bothering to try and split stitches. I'm just getting it in there because this is nice, big, bulky yarn and that's a nice big hook. And I will count up my stitches. I should have about 57, 58 is fine. 56 is fine, but I'm aiming for 57. And I am back at the beginning. Here's the thing, we do not join our rows. We do not join our rows with a slip stitch as we work the upper part of the hat. So this is, this is I know we say that in the tutorial, I think I, I say it till I'm blue in the face, but people still ask, do I join with a slip stitch in chain one? And nope, you don't, you don't have to do that. You are just going to single crochet into the first stitch of every row all the way around. So we're working in the round. It's like a big old spiral. Now, if you have trouble, keeping track of that first stitch. Every time you make your first stitch of the row, you can mark it with a stitch marker. When you get back around, you're not joining, you're just single crocheting directly into it. And you've got the same number of stitches per row going forward. So if I have 57 in my establishing row, I have 57 in every row as I work up. It is helpful to mark the first stitch of the row with a stitch marker if you can't readily identify the seam. So if you've done your seam, like I have, I flipped my hat inside out, you may not even really be able to see it. And of course, the fluffier your yarn, the less likely you are to see things like your seam. So you might find it helpful to just put a stitch marker on that first stitch of the row, just so you can kind of keep track of where you are. We are no longer back loops only single crocheting. We're just single crocheting as normal. Now, having said that, if you want to continue the back loops only ribbed look, you're more than welcome to. I've made a hat in this pattern doing that, and it's kind of fun. It just sort of continues the ribbed stitch look all the way up. But I like the look of the solid single crochet. So I am attempting to keep my stitches comfortable. I am trying not to crochet too tightly. I'm using a six and a half millimeter hook to that end. because so I don't want tight tension. I don't want tight stitches. I want a nice, loose, cozy, fluffy hat that I can pull on on a really cold winter day and it's not gonna feel tight. I really don't like tight fitting hats in the winter. I guess probably because when you're outside you have to wear them. And um, I don't like the feeling of a tight hat for too long on my head. So Nico, <laughs> dear sweet Yay, Nico. Nico. <laughs> thank you Nico for gifting another membership. And it looks like curated life by Wigglebutt Crochet has won it. <laughs> Curated Life by Wiggle Butt Crochet. So do you wiggle your butt while you crochet? Is this or do you a... crochet and wiggle your butt at the same time? I do like, I, I do we like. We need to see videos. <laughs> put, put some videos up on YouTube. I want to see that in action. Wiggle butt. Wiggle butt crochet. I, that sounds like something a dog, a dog probably does. Oh yeah, a dog. <laughs> dogs love to wiggle their bums Do when they're dogs happy. Dogs are in permanent wiggle butt. Oh, I know. They're so cute. Um, in regards to your tea order, mm -hmm. uh, would you like a new... Uh, package of tea? Or are you going to use like your... a new tea? Yeah, I want a new tea bag. Yeah, yes, you please. do, eh? Yes, I this do. This is getting expensive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've already finished my second row of single crochet, working in the round on the upper part of my hat, and I know that because I've come up against my stitch marker. I take my stitch marker out, work the first stitch of row three, work the next one, back up a little bit. Mark that stitch. It is always going to be in alignment with my back seam, which is really difficult to see. You can see it if I've turned my hat inside out. And I'm off to the races. So now, once again, I am looking for a hat height of, depending on how slouchy I want it, 
eh, eight to nine inches for adult females, maybe nine to 10 inches for adult males. If you've got big hair or um, a bigger head, you might want to make it a little, little longer. If you want extra slouch a little longer, 10 inches, 11 inches, something like that. For children, eight to nine inches for your tweens, for younger than tweens, so like little kids, maybe seven to eight inches, but eight inches is okay because um, it'll just slouch a little bit. Uh, and I'm talking measuring from the bottom of the brim up to where we start to close it off. So I'm aiming for a measurement that goes from the bottom of the brim up to eight to nine inches. I'm, I've got a regular sized adult female head um, nine to 10 for adult males, remembering that we're going to then start to close off the top. If you're making it for kids, maybe seven to eight inches. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. Here? Are you here to take my money? I'm here to serve you. Yeah. It's part of the marriage agreement, Thank right? Thank you. I appreciate Page that. Page four. Page four. Initial here and initial there. Thank you. Thank you. So same I, tea? Same tea, please. I uh, pause every so often just to kind of pull more slack on my yarn out of the center of my ball. Um, once again, uh, you want around 175 yards for a child's hat, around 200 yards, give or take, for an adult hat. This is going to vary from person to person, but that's just a kind of a good rule of thumb number. Uh, and I'm going to sort of just crochet a little quicker now. Now this is really simple single crochet. I'm trying to kind of keep my hands kind of loose as I work because I want, I don't want a tight stitch. If you feel like you can't keep a nice, easy tension or even a little bit looser because that's what you want, you can always go up a hook size in the upper part of the hat. And what that'll do is it'll help keep your hat straight. So you see, if I lay my hat flat, it should just con consistently be straight. It shouldn't go out and it shouldn't go in. If it's going out, your tension is too wide or you have too many stitches and you can adjust that by getting a smaller hook in there. Oh, thank you. This sweetheart. smells amazing. This is really good. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. Can you hold oh, it? Oh, yep, yep. Can you just put it right here? I can't grab it. Look at the beautiful color. Oh, you left the other tea bag. Mm -hmm. That's nice. You're going to be asleep in no time. <laughs> Chamomile doesn't really knock me out. Thank you so much. Okay, I have to let that cool a little bit. Um, where was I? Yes. Yeah, so if it's out doing this, then you need to don't you don't necessarily have to decrease the number of stitches. Just maybe go down a hook size, and that'll help pull it back in. If your hat's doing this, you might have too few stitches up top, or you're too tight. So you can correct that by going up a hook size or two to adjust your tension out to be a little a little looser. So what you're going for is just. A hat then when pressed flat is basically straight all the way up and down and this is the end of my third row again it's just straight single crochet in the round getting up against that little stitch marker people ask me where I get these stitch markers these are sewing clips my mother-in-law my mighty mother-in-law found them probably at um, I'm gonna guess it was at fabric land uh, but I know you can get them on Amazon, you can get packs of them on Amazon. We had a, an affiliate link for them a while ago. I don't know if we still have an active link, but but just go on Amazon or whatever craft site you like to order from and look for sewing clips. That's what they're called. Can you show the yarn you're using again? Yes. For the people that want to use the same stuff, <laughs> if it's still available. This is a lovely great big ball of Diamond Select Olivia. I don't know anything else about it. Um, it was made in Turkey. It says right here it was made in Turkey, but um, hey! it's 100% acrylic and That's it's very That's Nico pretty. stomping ground. Yeah. Nico can get it for sure. <laughs> Connie! Connie has gifted a membership. Thank you so much, Connie. And Christina has won it. Fantastic. Thank you, guys. So like we said, we do have a tutorial for this hat pattern. It's like the first hat we ever did on the channel. It's like a nine-year-old tutorial, but it's still pretty great. It, uh, you know, in it, I sort of demonstrate measuring your own circumference of your it's head. It's only the best 
hat tutorial on YouTube. <laughs> like, way to be modest there. <laughs> it's number one hat tutorial on YouTube. Is it? I don't know. Yeah. Just saying. Just it's a it is a really great easy winter hat, and I think everybody should be able to make themselves a simple winter hat uh, for anybody, friends, family, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I love it. I've been making this style of hat for a long time, and uh, it's just pretty. It's a nice way to showcase a really pretty ball of yarn too. Let's let's uh, let's let's talk about that for a second. If you've got pretty balls of yarn that you collect because they're pretty like this this tweedy stuff maybe you picked up a pretty ball of self-striping or variegated yarns or something um, or you've got a really nice ball of yarn that was a little more on the expensive side this is a pretty you know easy to not mess up pattern and it's a nice way to use up a single ball of really pretty yarn so here I am back at the beginning I'm gonna work a couple stitches put my stitch marker back in it's in line with my back seam. So the other thing I can do is this. Put it at the bottom of my seam. That way I don't even have to pause when I'm working around and around and around. And every time I come back around, I know that that's the seam, that's the beginning of the row. And now I can really rip. Go, go, go. Go, go gadget crochet hook. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> yes, Kaylee, we are definitely going to do the Granny Square game at some point. We have not forgotten. Still working out the two of us being in the same room at the same time. I think we're pretty close we to are. being able to do it. Getting um, close. But I don't know about being in the same room. We, uh... We'll have to see if there's space. Well, you won't be able to see if but I'm cheating or not. But I think we're almost set up to do it, um... The way we are now. Yeah, almost, almost. We're getting almost. there. Almost. Woohoo! Granny Square game! I do love the Granny Square game. Pull out some more slack on my yarn. Do 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 do. All right. Amanda got it. Ashley got it. <laughs> Some of you got it. I am. I, I do like to, um, I like patterns where you can sort of, okay, you get yourself established, you know what you're up to, like a granny square, that kind of thing. And then once the pattern's established, you know, you just kind of, you can turn your brain off and just go for it. Caroline says, need to be in the same room unless the pool noodle is really long. I could buy a whole bunch of pool noodles and tape them all together, it's I guess. True. <laughs> That'd be fun. That would be funny. To but... make sure Jada doesn't cheat from, like, the other room. <laughs> You'd never know, though. I can watch you on camera. I know what you're up to. <laughs> I'm spying on you right now. You're crocheting a purple hat. I know exactly what you're doing. I'm going to just zip around the hat again to the end of this row and then I'm going to pause and just show you a couple things. I might Big even thank you to Regi Reg Regina for reminding um, us. Uh, click the like button, everybody. Click the like button. <laughs> click, click, click. Thank you. Yes, thank it, you. Helps us out. Appreciate it. It does. It tells the YouTube algorithm that people actually want to watch this <laughs> yeah the more you the more the likes you have the more youtube system goes oh people really enjoy this video we're gonna make sure it uh it it gets boosted yeah, it shows up in other people's feeds and we want jada boosted because <laughs> jada is fabulous <laughs> thanks honey <laughs> i have to say that it's that's page seven that's, of that's the part of the contract agreement. yeah <laughs> yeah at least on a weekly basis Lurkers are welcome. 
Lurkers um, can also click the like button. Yes. And we promise we won't uh, we won't say anything. <laughs> we won't give away your little corner. <laughs> we love our lurkers yes, here at the Jesus Show. We love our lurkers. Show. All right, I'm just... How many lurkers today? <laughs> yes, Leslie, I would love to know. How many people are lurking today? Click the like button if you're a lurker. Little sip of my new hot tea. Kaylee, a member for nine months. Thank you, Kaylee. With a membership milestone, she says, it is the best game ever, the Granny Scrap game. I love it. I just love that you're... It's kind of a challenge. It's kind of goofy. It actually ends up making some pretty cool looking stuff. I don't know. I love it. <laughs> Victor says, me, I admit it. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lurker. We, we're pulling the lurkers out of the shadows. We are. Shell! Hey, welcome to the party, everyone. Shell's here. Hi, Shell. Member for 57 months. Thank you, Shell. Happy Saturday. I'm putting together my Granny Square Day inspired throw. Oh, it's going to be so pretty. The only things Mr. needs to see in the game are the board and the timer. <laughs> I agree, Shell. <laughs> I'm at five and a half inches. I've got ooh, another four, three and a half inches to go. Because I'm aiming for eh, between eight and nine. I guess I can rely on everyone, um, everyone keeping an eye on you to make sure you're not cheating. <laughs> if I'm in the other room, we have everyone else's eyeballs on you. Well, I know how busy Data you get. Data does like to cheat during the Granny you, Square you, game. You end up watching the board. You have to watch the timers. So we have can... rules. <laughs> no cheating. Cheating part of the fun. <laughs> Big hello to all the lurkers. Welcome, everybody, for hanging out. Thank you. And uh, happy Saturday, I gotta say. It's uh, not... We were, it was going to rain. It was supposed to rain all day. We were supposed to have torrential rain all day. It is an absolutely glorious, sunny blue sky and white fluffy cloud day out there. So, so much for, so much for the rain. <laughs> but I'll take it. It's nice to have sun. What round are you on right now? Good question. Let me just get to the end and I will count up the rows for you. Is anyone making the hat along with Jada today? For those of you that have maybe made 10 or 20 or a thousand of these hats. And how many of you made the slippers from from last Monday? Oh, the uh, slippers Monday. from last week. Yeah. Kimberly, a member for 16 months. Membership milestone. Hi, everyone. I made this hat and the brick stitch. I love the brick stitch slouchy hat. That's another fun tutorial we've got. Um, brick stitch is such a fun pattern and it, it worked itself into a hat very nicely too. I love that. Poor results coming in. Okay. What is your favorite yarn fiber to work with? Acrylic and blends, 75%. Natural only, wool, cotton, opaque, etc. 18%, other, 4%. Polyester, 1%. I like it all, but I would say that I use more acrylic than probably anything. Acrylic and cotton blends uh, for a few reasons. One, it maintains its color. Two, it's cheap and cheerful, and I like cheap and cheerful. Um, I don't find it itchy. I find it washes well. Um, and I say the same thing for cotton. I love cotton because I can wash it and it's uh, heat resistant. So it makes it useful for a whole bunch of projects. Cotton is breathable. Uh, acrylic is nice and warm. Makes for good blankets and stuff. I have to say for acrylic yarn through, the, uh, through the screen, that yarn looks really soft it's and plush. Nice. Mm -hmm. oh. How's my tea? Very good. Thank would you. you give it, what would you give it? A nine out of 10? Hmm. 9.2? I'd say it's about an eight. An eight? But that's not really you. That's more the tea. <laughs> All right. Um, as far as the upper is concerned, I have now, this is my foundation row of single crochet across the edge of my ribbed stitch cuff. So that's row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've completed seven rows so far of just single crochet in the round. Uh, each of my rows has 57 stitches in it. And I have my stitch marker down here at the base of my seam because I know that's where my rows started. And because of the fluffy nature of this yarn, because of the twisted color 
ever-changing nature of this yarn. You can't really tell where one row flows into the next. Um, plus it's a single crochet, so it's a shorter stitch, which is nice because then it means that you don't really have a seam in your hat and it doesn't matter if you're wearing it forwards, backwards, whatever. So yet another reason I like this pattern. Um, Sarah says there's a storm headed out on the west coast. Um, I also would like to sort of um, give a nod to all of our friends and family up in the Northwest Territories. Um, it is just a, a disaster up there right now with the wildfires. They've had to evacuate the capital city, which is just kind of alarming. So um, my, my thoughts are with you guys. This is a big country, but sometimes it doesn't feel that big. <laughs> uh, someone mentioned that they're getting ashes in the down and all the way down in BC, the su the south of BC. Wow, I can believe it. My goodness. I uh, made those slippers last Monday. Um, already have taken them to my sister-in-law's house, so they are now my ha my slippers to wear at her place. Uh, Mr. and Stitches has requested a pair in t-shirt yarn, so I will be making a pair of slippers and t-shirt yarn, and I'll give you guys an update on how that goes, because it's a slightly stretchier yarn than the I've stuff I've been yarn shopping in uh, Jada's stash. Yes, he was selecting he literally... my my slipper product. <laughs> he was. I was like, hmm, this stuff. For she has so many. I don't know which one to choose. <laughs> I tend to lean towards the the more natural, um, kind of smoother feeling yarns. So t-shirt yarn, um, cot mercerized cotton, um, maybe acrylic. It depends on the type. Yes. Um, Not I don't all like acrylic. The, are... I don't like the yarns that like are constantly pilling or fluffing. You know those types. Yeah. You also don't like anything that itches you, so you don't like Yeah, wool. I mean, I like, I, I do appreciate wool, but it does really itch me. Um, but it'd be okay for slippers, because if I have my um, my man socks on. <laughs> uh, ladies out there, does your does your man wear socks, like, like all the time? Like, Summer, winter, day, night. To bed. In the shower, to bed. <laughs> Let us let let me know in the yes. chat. Is your man a sock man? Is your man a true man, a real man that wears socks like everywhere, <laughs> even in the middle of August? <laughs> and if you're a man, are you wearing socks right now? <laughs> Regina says yes. <laughs> you know you're a real man when you wear socks. <laughs> A hundred percent of the time. Like it's a thousand degrees. All year out. long, day and night. <laughs> Summer says no. Summer, no. you're going to have to have a conversation here. <laughs> oh, Barbara says poll. Now that's a goofy. Now that's a good silly Saturday poll. Okay. <laughs> and a half inches so another another two inches ish yeah another two inches or so again um, if you're wondering about the height you want to make your hat remember you're measuring it from the bottom of the brim all the way up that's before we start to decrease and depending on the age that you're making it for um, that will to sort of affect the height that you're or the, the tall measurement you're going for we've got our hat fit or head sizing chart available for free over on our website on the tools page so please 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 feel free to make use of that um, it is an invaluable source if you're into making hats for friends family uh, for donation if you just don't have the head handy it is a the, it's the most common sizing um, and it gives you head circumference and it also gives you depth of hat from the bottom of the brim, which is what we're doing today. Um, so that's there for your convenience. 
I, I like it when you know when you get into the you get into the rhythm you know you you're you're uh, rhythm's the right word but there's something more to it like you you're now you're zipping along you know your your fingers know where they where they want to put the hook the hook knows almost instinctively where it wants to go uh, it's like it's like your your hands are almost working independently of the rest of you I love that that's the zone that's the crochet zone <laughs> some some hubbies only take their socks off for the shower <laughs> and that's like you know that's that's pushing it Jada flings her socks off constantly. She she would rather go barefoot everywhere. I, she, she would go she would go into town barefoot if she could. Yep, I do not like to wear no socks, anything no shoes, on my feet. I am no pants, just gone. <laughs> I got groceries to get. Leave me alone. Stay out of my way. <laughs> I I have to admit I am I I do like slippers for the winter. I like to have a pair of slippers to wear at someone else's house. Um. But I am most comfortable in my bare feet. I am most comfortable wearing the least amount of clothing possible. So it's kind of a bummer that I live in Canada where you have to pretty much be, <laughs> you have to be dressed against the weather pretty much all the time. But I, uh, I, love, I love skirts. I'm a skirt girl. I, uh, I do have pants, obviously, but I, I prefer to wear skirts. And that's why I love the warm weather. I can wear, wear all my, my skirts, my pretty summer dresses. I absolutely love that. Um, I love dresses for that reason. You can just throw it on and you look like you've, you know, fussed. <laughs> but yeah, I am not, I'm not a sock person. I am not wearing socks right now. I am barefoot. <laughs> what are pants? <laughs> I'm right, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Sorry, everybody. Let me bring my work back down. Hey, uh, Yvonne just bought the pattern, but our little uh, chime didn't go oh, off. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Let me so pop over. So a big thank you to Yvonne. Thank you, Yvonne. Maybe it's delayed. Let me just take a look here. Technology. It loves to give me the gears. Let's see here. is coming along nicely oh i would like to thank wanda ivana and william cat i like that oh, our little chime didn't go off yvonne Look so thank you yvonne thank you ivana and then it doesn't work for no reason thank you thank you wanda thank you to janet and sylvia and holly hobby and Lori and vivian and sakura sue and peggy and kathy and jane and jessica and jessica again thank you to rita laura cynthia uh, Silocoli, or Silcoli, Silcoli, that's Silcoli, oh, I like that, Silcoli, I get it. Marie, Teresa, and Kara, Michelle, Joanna, Debbie, and Summer. Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for popping in, and I'm so sorry that the little chime isn't working right now. I have no idea why. <laughs> Let's hope that it's... It's so strangely random. It is it's not so like we updated anything bizarrely in the last random. half hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yvonne, she has, she's William Cat. <laughs> Thank you, Yvonne. This is wonderful. Leslie says she has a crochet basket just for dirty socks. That's genius. Oh my gosh. And gross. No, it's perfect. Then they're not mixing with your a other A giant clothes. basket full of dirty socks? Yeah, well, obviously, she. It, I'm sure it gets to the washing machine eventually. But <laughs> I'm it, just teasing. That's a nice place to put to your socks. I have some trolling in, just a little bit. Mr. Loves to Troll. I don't even necessarily recognize when he's trolling me. Well, uh, I mean, the chat trolls me constantly. Yeah, but... <laughs> I'm just not sharing it with you all the time. <laughs> I, think, I think you should have a dirty sock basket, mister. I agree. I will make you one. Okay. It'll be the Mr. I Mr. And Stitch's dirty sock basket. <laughs> I will choose the yarn. Maybe I'll make it match my slippers. Oh my gosh, that'd be cute. 
It should have like a little sign hanging on it, like you know those those kids clubhouse signs that says "My Dirty Socks Only." Okay, I'm gonna end this poll and then I'm gonna um, put up another one. All right. Does your man wear socks a hundred percent of the time? Fifty-five percent. LOL. Nope. Oh my God. Yes. Forty-four percent. Wow, that's close. <laughs> I really like the I see Viva's commenting on the color of this. I really like it too. And I'm just I'm looking at the the label and I'm I don't even think that there's like a name for it on this. So Diamond Select. Olivia, maybe Olivia is the name of the color. Color. Color number two. That's helpful. Color two. Lot 9688. Sounds like the start of the the uh, uh Phantom of the Opera. Lot 666 then. Um, yeah, lot 9688 is the lot, color number two, Diamond Select Olivia, 100% acrylic, 200 grams or 300 meters. It is lovely stuff. Very pretty color. It's like kind of purple and pink and peach, you know, the stuff I love. Purple, pink, peach. And it's time I had myself a nice new winter cap. I have been wearing sort of the same old winter hats. I have a very pretty lilac coat and I don't have anything to wear with it, so this will match. I'm going to get around again. I'm going to give myself a little measurement. You'll notice me throughout this tutorial kind of constantly pausing and measuring. It's good to do that when you're making clothes. Constantly pause and measure. We're, we're discussing uh, crunchy socks here in the chat. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> Where's that basket? Where's that basket? Get that basket over here. Jeez. The crunchy socks go in the basket. Don't forget the basket. Put them right in the machine. What is what? <laughs> A new silly Saturday pool. A new silly pool. I'm liking the silly Saturday pools. Well, I mean, it's Saturday. And We're all silly hanging Saturday out. Saturday crochet. Actually, you're not crocheting anything silly. This is extremely practical. This is very practical. A winter hat. Yeah. Precious. It's also a great time to get sort of making. Just get even a couple made. You feel so good. You look at it. You go, "Well, there's some. There's some some winter you, crochet." You know who would really love your um, basket full of crunchy, dirty socks? Your dog. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Your dog would really appreciate that basket. Possibly even the cats. They don't seem yeah, the to mind. The cat, maybe the cat. Yeah, but the dog for sure. I have hit the eight inch mark. Now, if I start closing it in now, this will roughly cup my head kind of beanie style but i want a little bit of extra slouch so i might go a little higher if you're unsure it's always good to try it on see how it sits on your head um see how much more hat you might want um, i'm going to go to nine inches so that i've got just a little bit of slouch so one more inch or two and a half more centimeters that will be approximately three more rows around and around and around of single crochet using this lovely size five chunky weight yarn and my six and a half millimeter hook, also known as a K. And I am trying to keep my tension nice and easy. So I am not gripping my hook very tightly. I'm kind of letting it just almost like hover on the inside of my fingers. And uh, off I go. Sorry if I'm crocheting up a little high. I sometimes like to, something gets bigger and bigger, I try to keep it on the desk. There we go. I like that flop, flip flop. Swish, flip, flop. I like doing that.
Summer says, "We, Mister, we need a gaming pool of sorts too." Hmm. Well, if you have any ideas on a, a gaming pool, go for it. Um, Are we talking video games? I guess. Oh. I think we're talking video games. I'm not sure. Um, I have to. I have to get back into. I am currently awaiting Fay Farm. And. Super Mario Wonder. Super Mario Wonder. Oh my gosh, I can't we have, wait. We have uh, multiple games on pre-order. And Fantasy Farm, Life. And I think that's multiplayer, so we're going to be playing that together. The new Fantasy Life. I am just... Uh, new Fantasy Life isn't... Rele isn't it's coming. It's been announced, but it's not They're available. still saying 2023, but... Um, the new Mario game is an absolute must. Yes. And there's a new RPG. The It's, it's the old RPG made new. Um, for Super Mario, so we're excited about that too. Um, we got some. Uh, what did I get recently on Steam? I got Dredge. It's like a fishing game, and I got um, Dave the Diver. Dave the Diver. I'm really looking forward to that one. But I've just been playing a whole bunch of Zuma lately. I can't get enough Zuma. And Jada's been playing a match three. Yes. Sometimes when I just want to zone out and not think, I like to play match three games. I forget what it's called. It's a really good one. Free one on uh, the Play Store. Yeah, it's a free to play. I for Do you remember what it's called? Um, Kings something? Royal something. Royal or? match. It's a real good one if anyone likes that kind of stuff. Free Handley made owl with a super chat. Thank you. I hope I'm saying that right. Oh, thank you, Free Handley. Thank you for the free sunburst pattern. You're welcome. My baby blanket turned out gorgeous. I'll share the picture on my Ravelry and tag you to it. Thank you. Thank you. We have plenty of free patterns on our pattern workshop page on our website. There's at least 50 or more. I love that pattern. That starburst pattern or sunburst pattern is a classic. The round ripple baby blanket. I love that pattern. It is a classic um, and it is... A lot of fun to make and it can be it can feel a little complicated but once you get into the rhythm of it it is just so pretty Ashley, Ashley wants me to guess what she's making <laughs> am I just supposed to guess I'm gonna say a sweater a crochet sweater or a blanket that's my guess blankets a good guess with crochet or it's a blanket is always a good guess got it it's royal match That's royal the match game. yeah thank you jennifer that one's that one's great yes um it's free to play they do kind of they kind of pepper you with the microtransactions but I make one you can though. avoid them yeah yeah i haven't spent any uh, money on it yeah not that i i will i if i really like a free to play game i will spend money on it because i i feel that i'm i'm helping to support the the developers Especially I enjoy I like the something. Royal Match game. I, I think it's a real good one. Yeah. You've spent some money on it. A little bit. Yeah. I I, I, uh, I got sucked in a couple of times. If it's that good, though, you know, you kind of, you want to tip them. It's almost like I don't them. mind. I don't mind throwing them uh, some, you know, a few bucks here and yeah. there when it's free. I think that's fair. Somebody's working hard to keep it looking the way it does. Uh, I don't like it when they're like, hey, get this bundle for a hundred and fifty dollars i'm like uh you know where you can you know your microtransactions aren't so micro yeah <laughs> that, that's a little insulting but the little ones not so bad leslie leslie zimmerman with a super chat thank you so much if nobody has told you today i will say it i love you too oh thank you thank you <laughs> thank you so much leslie the, 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 that, that actually made my cheeks rosy. <laughs> Krista. Krista asks, what would you su suggest for sock yarn that isn't wool? Um, cotton with a, a bit of nylon in it. Um, I think nylon's really important because it is um, stretchy and strong. Uh, cotton because it breathes and it's soft and comfortable and, uh, it, it's, um, wash as well nylon wash as well too polyester uh and cotton blends is okay as well but i think i think i prefer nylon over polyester um and i will say that i've never made uh i've never crocheted socks slipper socks yes uh baby booties a million times 
Um, but never like the sort of sock you would slip on and, and you know, throw underneath a boot or something. I have not ever um, crocheted any of those. So I can't really say that I found like the perfect sock yarn yet. Um, that is sort of on that beautiful bucket list of things to do with my life. One of them is to to create a nice thin sock that I like the feel of underneath a shoe and to find the yarn that I like to do it with. So uh, that is on my list of things to do. And when I get to that part of my, my life's challenges, I will bring you all with me, I promise. <laughs> Lala! Oh my gosh, Lala, hi! Lala, a member for 56 months. I am thrilled to make a live today. I'm thrilled you were able to make it, Lala. I feel like poor Lala's always missing the lives. Oh my gosh, do you wear socks 100% of the time? Nope, 58% on and off, 25%. Oh, that's funny, on and off. Oh yes, 15%. 120 votes. Um, I do not. I'm like, I'm the nope category. I prefer not to. Oh, Victor's gotta go. See you, Victor. Thanks for hanging out. Um, guys, I think I've hit the nine inch mark pretty much exactly, yes. So from the bottom of my brim to the top of my straight single crochet, I've got nine inches exactly, which is more or less my target. So 23 and a half centimeters. That's tall enough for me. That fits my head, gives me a bit of slouch. This is a nice big kind of cozy pattern. So once you've hit the target height, and once again, you're measuring from the bottom all the way to the top. So eight to nine inches for ladies, longer if you want more slouch, nine to 10 inches for gentlemen or big hair or longer if you want more slouch, maybe seven to eight inches for children, maybe seven inches for little, little kids. And again, a little longer if you want more slouch, that's your height. We've got the, the head, head sizing chart over on the tools page of our website. You can consult that if you need additional help. Uh, it's time to start to close in the top. So here we go. We are going to decrease using the single crochet two stitches together stitch. So we're going to start the next row, whatever the first decrease row is, it doesn't matter how many rows you have at all, you're going for a measurement. So I'm not did, even going to count my rows. Did I don't we even get uh, Nico's um, gifted oh, membership? Nico! I have a sip of my tea here. Nico has gifted another membership because Nico is super awesome. Thank you, Nico. And Charlie! Oh my gosh, Charlie won it. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Nico. Um, all right, we are gonna start decreasing. We are gonna use the single crochet, two stitches together. I love this stitch. You pick up a loop in each of the next two stitches. That gives you three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull back through everything. That's our decrease stitch. We are going to single crochet as usual into the next stitch. Then we are just going to continue that all the way around. You're gonna single crochet two stitches together, like so. Pick up a loop pick up a loop and crochet and single crochet once into the next stitch. So if you're not using your stitch marker, this might be a good time to bust it out. I'm going to mark that first single crochet two stitches together stitch that I just did so that I know that that's where I started my decrease row. And I'm going to alternate between single crocheting two stitches together and single crocheting as normal. So decrease, regular stitch, decrease, regular stitch. Are you only using the front loops of your decreases? No, Lori, great question. I am using the whole stitch. So I'm still using the whole stitch, using the whole stitch to pick up loops and the whole stitch to do my regular single crochet. So the whole stitch, no more. The only place we use the back loops only single crochet is in the brim of the hat. And then we are using regular single crochet stitching. Cozy, Mr. What is Cozy Gaming in the middle? Oh, Cozy Gaming. So a Cozy Game is sort of a name given to um, video games that are just gentle. They don't have a lot of fighting there, or maybe if they do, it's cute or funny. Um, they're, they're pretty, they're laid back, 
Um, they're not gross. They don't have like, you know, um, there's, they're not like overly violent if they're violent, if, the, if at all. They're kind of like farming games and, and little sweet simulation games. And um, so that's kind of a cozy game. It's cute and it's like a simulation game. Um, that's how I would describe them. Lori, uh, Lori. Lori has a, a good question here. Mm -hmm. uh, Are you only using the f from loops on your decreases? Already answered Lori's question. Oh, right here. sorry. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I was off doing something else. <laughs> I'm not paying attention. Perfectly all right. All right. So I have single crocheted in every single stitch um, straight. And now I've worked my first row of decrease. So it's a single crochet, two stitches together. Single crochet is normal. Single crochet, two stitches together. Single crochet is normal. So decrease one, decrease one, decrease one, all the way around. So now my hat top is starting to close in a little bit at the top. I'm going to work a second decrease row now in which I will single crochet two stitches together every set of stitches all the way around. So no single crocheting in between. I am single crocheting two stitches together all the way around. So I will effectively half whatever the stitch count is that I had left. I'm going to still mark that first stitch of the row so that I know where I am when I get back to it. Connie! Connie, Mad Crafty Mom, member for 28 months, thank you Connie, says, I am working on a 100 day Halloween granny square blanket, wow, with different sizes of the granny squares and maybe a Beetlejuice cat doll. Ah, oh, Beetlejuice, 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 I love that. Beetlejuice was one of my favorite movies. And I think the music, the soundtrack is one of my favorite soundtracks. That sounds really cool, a 100 day Halloween granny square, woo! I'm trying to keep my decrease stitches somewhat tight because I don't want there to be big gaps in between the stitches all the way around. Although, if you feel it's a little gappy, don't worry because we are going to cinch the top of the hat shut as soon as we're finished with this decrease row. So this is the same whether you're making it for kids or adults. It's two rows of decrease. So the first decrease row is single crochet, two stitches together. Single crochet is normal single crochet two stitches together, single crochet is normal. And the second row of decrease is just single crochet two stitches together all the way around. And it's the same, whether you're making it for kids or adults and the stitch count doesn't matter. It does not matter. This is just, the, the point of this is just to sort of close in the top of the hat a little bit before we cinch it shut. All right, I am back at the beginning. I will finish off with a single crochet, two stitches together. And that is it for the decreasing. So I'm just gonna pause for a second so you can all see the top of my hat. That is the size of the hole that is left. So I've closed it in quite a, quite a bit. And now we are just going to cut ourselves a long length. Same if it's for kids or adults, long length, Fasten off. And we're going to thread up our yarn needle and we're gonna weave it in and out. So in and out and in and out all the way through each one of those decrease stitches. So in through one stitch, back out through the next, in through one stitch, back out through the next, and you're gonna do that all the way around. And you can cinch it gently as you go. That is one good looking hat. This is very pretty. What a nice color combination. Yeah, I, I like this. I'm looking forward to mm -hmm. wearing this. Not that I want the winter to come up too quickly, but it is nice to know I have a new hat to wear. That's something to look forward to. When you get all the way around, just cinch it shut like this. If you have a little bit of a space left at the top, that's perfectly okay because usually on a hat like this, we add a little hat bobble. You can also take your needle and work it through, back and forth through some of the stitches at the top of the hat just to close it in a little bit more.
we have a membership milestone. Yvonne! Yvonne has been a member for 54 months. Thank you, Yvonne. Everything about this channel and the community is so wholesome and lovely. Thank you, Mr. and Jada and everyone. And I agree. Thank you, everybody. This channel is fun and wholesome because of you guys. I mean, we <laughs> are just being ourselves, but the community that has sort of come up around this channel is amazing. You guys are fun. You're creative. You're, you're, you're supportive. You're wonderful. You're funny. I mean, we look forward to our live streams with you guys because we laugh as much as you guys do. <laughs> wholesome. Wholesome. I love that. I wholeheartedly agree. I'm going to take my needle now. I'm going to push it through to the inside of the hat and just turn my hat inside out. And I can do the same thing in here. I can kind of just grab some stitches on either side of that cinched up space. It doesn't have to be neat and tidy. And you don't have to pull very tightly. You're just kind of, these are what I call stay stitches. They're kind of going to make your work stay. <laughs> I'll go back and forth a couple times. And as soon as I feel like that's good, nothing's going to go anywhere, I will make a little knot. And I can weave my tail in underneath some of the stitches, or I can just sort of trim it. I might just go around the top opening a little bit. I know this isn't going to unravel because this is quite sort of fluffy yarn. So I'll just go back and forth once or twice and then I will trim. So that's enough of that. Plus it's the inside of your hat so don't fuss the inside. Ah, That is one lovely soft fluffy hat ready to go. Now how about a little something for the top. Let's make a dongle. I have some yarn left over. Let's make a little squiggle. These are fun. I like these. We have a hat dongle tutorial or a hat doodads. I guess we call them sort of doodads uh, in which we create three or four fun little things that you can add to the top of your hat. So we've got a pom pom, a ball pom. We've got a squiggle, which I'm about to do and tassels. We had tassels too. We will link the original hat tutorial in the description box and the comments. Mm -hmm. And we'll do the same with the doodads tutorial. Yes. So what am I doing? Well, I started with a slip knot. I'm going to chain eh, 20 to 25, 20 to 25. I've left a long tail at the beginning because I'm going to use it to attach it to the top of the hat. And also we will snap a photo of Jada wearing the hat so that everyone can see the hat and her lovely pretty little face. Ha, thank you. <laughs> I have to say that. That's that's page one of so that's, the that's uh, part marriage of the agreement. agreement. Yep, yep. Thank you for fulfilling the contractual obligations. I'm fulfilling obligations. the agreement. <laughs> I get to keep my job and my house. And your video games. <laughs> my video games. <laughs> All right. I've chained 21. The, chain, the extra one gives me the turning chain. Lala! Oh my goodness! With a home. super lovely super chat. Thank you. I feel at home when watching you. And though I have crocheted 40 plus years, I learn a lot from you. You both are great. Thank you, Lala. Thank you so much. I think there's that's the thing I love about crochet and knitting and any of these hobbies. It doesn't matter how many years you've been at it. There's always something new to learn. And I think that's why I love it so much. So much. I mean, we've been having so much fun with the graphs this year, with the Fair Isle style, and even though I've done color changing work and graph work, you know, on and off since I started knitting and crocheting, I didn't do it as much as I've been doing it this year. And I have loved it so much that I keep wanting to do more. I keep looking for more ways to change colors, how to make it like neater, tidier, how to like little tips and tricks. And I'm finding little things as I go. And I love it. I love it. It kind of keeps my brain active. I have chained 21. The chain 21 is my turning chain, so I'm going to skip it. I'm going to work four single crochet into each chain all the way back. If you want something that twists even more, you can work five single crochet into every single chain, but four is fine. Do we have, do we have a birthday girl or guy in the chat? Oh my gosh, do we? I'm, I'm seeing birthday stuff. Happy I get to birthday. use my animation. Happy it's birthday. my favorite one. Happy birthday to you, whoever you are. Put in the chat. 
Happy birthday. It's a birthday weekend for somebody, so happy birthday if it's your birthday. Birthday weekend or a birthday week. And uh, thanks for spending the time with us. <laughs> Thank you for gifting us with your presence. Yes. We appreciate, we appreciate the company on a Saturday. Melissa! Melissa! Happy birthday, Melissa! And happy birthday, Ashley! Oh my goodness! We have two birthdays? All right! Woohoo! It's party weekend. It's party weekend. So as you can see, as I'm crocheting, the it's starting to spin out beneath me. So this is how you make one of these little spirals. These are so fun. This is such a, we've, we've used this technique to make doodads for our hats and to make hair for our fancy, our, our magical baby unicorn. If you've never, uh, if you've never made a large stuffed toy, our magical baby unicorn is a three part series that is like so much fun. And it's such a cute little, little, it's a big stuffy. It makes a big stuffed toy. Uh, and we used this technique to make her pretty hair and tail. I'm going to wrap up another pole. All right. Are you a gamer? What kind? Casual, 40%. Not at all. 39% cozy. 19% hardcore. 1%. So we've got at least one hardcore gamer. One hardcore gamer. In the group. Who's the hardcore gamer? You really stand out mm -hmm. in the chat. One percent. Casual cozy. That makes sense. Jay does a casual cozy. I don't know. I've put an well, awful lot of. Well, you've played some. You've played some quasi I've hardcore put, I, games. I've put probably four hundred hours into Skyrim. Does that count? <laughs> Yeah, I that I would I would I would call Skyrim a hardcore game. That's pretty hardcore. Mm -hmm. All right, this is the effect you get after you chain a length, so any length. But after you chain a length, I went with twenty plus one for turning chain, and then work four single crochet into every single chain all the way back. It twists on you. If it looks funny, just take a moment to grab the bottom and start turning it in one direction. And if it tangled itself or it was kind of doing something floppy, it'll fix out. Then you can snip your yarn, fasten off, and I like to do a knot with the two remaining tails. So I knot them together, and then I make sure that my hat is right side out. Yes, it is. I take my yarn needle, I poke it through one side of the cinched together top, grab one tail, and pull that in, not all the way, so I can still see what I'm doing. Then I take my yarn needle and I put it through on the other side of the cinched together top, grab the other tail and pull it through. And then I flip my hat over, pull both of those tails nice and taunt. Nico! <laughs> and then I tie the knot on the inside a few times. Nico with another gifted membership. Thank you so much, Nico. And let's see here. Darren has won it. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Nico. And congratulations to Darren. I'm going to weave my tails in a little bit and then I'm just going to trim whatever's left because once again, it's the inside of the hat. I know it's not going to unravel. Plus I knotted those tails together, so I'm not too worried about it coming undone. But a little bit of neatness is a nice thing. That's enough for me. Trim, trim, trim. And there's my little doodad. So I just think that's cute. I like the little, the little, the little bouncy doodad on the top of the hat. It makes it look kind of cute. Um, sometimes I put three up there so that, and they also kind of spin. <laughs> so I like that too. Um, so there, there is a nice cozy little winter cap already. Oh, that is such a nice soft floppy hat. I like a nice floppy winter cap. Um, we discussed ways that you can make it to fit you a little tighter, a little looser today. If you wear your hat and it stretches out on you, you can always take a hook that's a couple sizes smaller. So I used a six and a half millimeter. I'd probably switch down to my five and a half millimeter. 
And then I would crochet a row of single crochet around the bottom edge tightly. And that will help just make it want to stay on your head again. Um, you can also wash it in the washing machine. Sometimes that will help shrink it, but I, I advise that you let it air dry because when it tumbles in the dryer, it tends to pill. Um, crochet with Diane, a member for 36 months. Thank you, Diane, says, I'm tired and now I'm going to watch your hat live. <laughs> Thank you, Diane, we're glad you could make it. Our hat um, does have an original tutorial. So if you want the Coles Notes version of the tutorial, We'll make sure that's linked in the description box down below. The materials we used today and the hook I used are also listed down below. Um, our pattern is currently available in our Etsy shop for today and tomorrow at 50% off. So if you want the make it to fit anybody hat pattern um, that we came up with there, gosh, it was nine years ago now. If you'd like that pattern, it's been revised. It's got lots of photographs in it. It's available in our Etsy shop. It's 50% off this weekend. Um, and if you were here watching the live stream, you know that. So that's a nice little a little perk <laughs> and a thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh, and I almost forgot. I made this. Um, we did a mushroom. Uh, it's our mushroom applique that we did. This was the Friday tutorial. It was like a little key cap of our mushroom applique. Pull it up a bit. Yep. And um, this is the applique that we put on our crossbody purse. And you've seen it done in cotton. This is what it looks like in acrylic. I made a granny square uh, around it. So this is our told stool granny square pattern. I came up with that last night. We've got it up in the shop. Um, a couple people asked about maybe making a toad stool granny square. So this is the easiest and I frankly love this. I feel like it's kind of our, our toad stool is backlit by a setting sun or possibly a rising moon. I don't know. I love the sort of the fantasticalness of this. So great little autumn tutorial or an autumn pattern, I should say, if you're looking for some fun and funky granny squares to turn into bags or sweaters or even a wall hanging. I'm thinking about making a couple more and making a, a little wall hanging with this. Um, anyway, some people asked and it is available in our Etsy shop. So uh, while you're there, you'll see that one up top. But I, I forgot, I wanted to show you guys that. I love this, this is so fun. I, I, love, I love designing granny squares. <laughs> um, so this one's a lot of fun and um, it's, um, it's not difficult to do if uh, you've done any of our circle squared, um, circle in a square grannies. That's a very um, similar concept we've done here. And uh, we've just squared it up. The, so the square itself is only six rows and then we've got the applique on top of it. So easy peasy, no complicated stitches or knots or anything like that. There is a little sewing though. You're going to sew your applique down. Um, but we explain all that in the pattern and we've got lots of, of video help if you need to know how to do the sewing so that it doesn't show through to the back. Um, kind of magic. I like that. Anyway, yeah, so that's there too. But uh, enough said about that. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. We're going to take a picture of my new hat. Uh, we will get that up on the community tab a little later today. So you can check that out and we'll link the, the live and the video. Uh, the original pattern or I should say the original tutorial in that post as well so you can pop over and check those two things out thank you guys for hanging out on a Saturday it was kind of impromptu but we really appreciate you all being here and um I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend Mr. and Stitches do you have anything you would like to add um I just want to remind everyone that the hat's on sale this weekend 50 percent off and we still have our five or more sale uh until the end of the month so if you're looking for patterns Take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. um, and the tools page is where, just a quick reminder, we're going to link the original hat tutorial and the pom poms and etc. cetera. Um, and also the tools page has the sizing and that that's free on our website. So yes. we'll link that also. Yeah. I think that's it. I think we covered it all. I think so too. Uh, big thank you to everyone for joining us today. Thank you so much to everyone who took part in our um, our little sale today. We yes. really appreciate the support. Thank you tremendously. Uh, thank you to our members and our subscribers. And we'll see everyone on Monday. I think yes. Monday is the... We ran a poll. Do you want to give everyone the results of that poll? Actually, we... that poll is still running. So oh, currently... Yeah, well, let's talk about that before we, yes, we go. Yes, we, uh, we put up a poll on the community tab. If you go to the community tab and scroll back, you'll see the poll. It is what we're going to do on Monday during the live stream. Are we going to make a cowl to match the vintage beret? 
fingerless gloves to match the vintage beret, or are we going to revisit our leg warmer pattern? The poll is still running. Uh, currently, it's the cowl that's winning. So if you haven't had a chance to vote, uh, make sure you pop over and check out that poll. It's on the community page. And uh, you can find that by clicking on the name of the channel, Jaden Stitches, that takes you to our homepage and just look at those tabs. It says videos and lives and community. Click on the community tab and you can see everything there. Um, that's the place to go to vote. And we will see you guys Monday. So thank you so much for hanging out. Have a safe and crafty day, a safe and crafty weekend. We'll see you Monday. And uh, don't forget the vote in the bowl. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Have a, have a